One week from tonight, she's young, beautiful, successful, and has everything to live for. But someone wants her dead. Hello? I'll find you. I don't give up. Someone's Watching Me is considered to be a lost film of one of the greatest visionary directors of all time, John Carpenter. Someone's Watching Me was released on television in 1978, and after that, never got a home video release until 2007, when it was brought out of the Warner Brothers archive and put to DVD. In the 1970s, John Carpenter was working as a writer for hire, writing scripts for television and feature films, such as the Italian giallo thriller-inspired The Eyes of Laura Mars from 1978. The young director, who then had only made two films, Dark Star and Assault on Precinct 13, was hired by Warner Brothers in 1977 to write a script based on the true story that happened in two parallel high-rises in Chicago of a voyeur spying on and tormenting a woman in a parallel high-rise to his. Carpenter wrote the script as a feature, but Warner Brothers didn't think it would make a good feature, so the studio hired the director to make it a television film. This Hitchcockian film was originally called High Rise. Carpenter got to pick two of the three leading actors, choosing Lauren Hutton as the star, along with his then-future wife, Adrienne Barbeau, and the studio wanted one television actor, and they cast David Burney. John Carpenter recalls that the film was shot in under 10 days, mostly shot on sets built at Warner Bros. Studios. Someone's Watching Me is a really interesting and engaging film. The picture was Carpenter's homage to Hitchcock, particularly Rear Window, and Carpenter even made the opening credits sequence just like that of North by Northwest, homaging both the master of suspense as well as Saul Bass, the great graphic designer who designed Hitchcock's North by Northwest opening sequence. Although Someone's Watching Me is a television film and had a low budget, the picture works great within these limitations. Most of the action happens in Lauren Hutton's character's apartment, which adds a claustrophobic feel to the picture, as well as makes it more suspenseful. The film is both thrilling and entertaining all the way through. Carpenter never shows the face of the voyeur stalker or reveals his identity until the very end, which makes the picture very engaging and work great as a suspenseful mystery thriller. Lauren Hutton, who is also a model, gives a great expressive performance as the voyeur's victim. Two very interesting things about this film. The first is that it marked the first time Carpenter didn't compose the film himself, but Harry Suckman did instead, as the director is famous for having composed himself most of his film's soundtracks. The second is that according to John Carpenter, 1978, the year when this film was released, was the year during which the director worked his hardest and had gained the most experience as a director, having made three pictures that year, being Someone's Watching Me, Halloween, and his fantastic three-hour television movie, Elvis. John Carpenter's gaining of experience in 1978 truly shows as his next films were The Fog, Escape from New York, and The Thing, all three films being arguably the director's best work. The way Someone's Watching Me was made, very fast and with a great versatile camera crew headed by Robert Hauser as cinematographer, is very much like another great little picture by another great director, Martin Scorsese's After Hours, which was made with the same sort of conditions and limitations. Someone's Watching Me has a great fresh feel to it, and is definitely worth watching as much as John Carpenter's other great films.